All right, best ongoing. This is an award uh, to a game that has outstanding development of ongoing content that evolves the player experience over time. You have Apex Legends, Destiny 2, Call of Duty Warzone, Fortnite, and No Man's Sky. Oh, okay, this is tough. No Man's this Sky. is tough. No Man's Sky is definitely one to consider. Apex Legends is also kind of one to consider. Really? Uh, yes, I would say so, honestly. Um, just with the amount of characters they continue to add, they have three maps now that you can play to, uh, play from. Fortnite, of course, like Fortnite is Fortnite. I feel like, I almost hope that Fortnite doesn't win because it's just, it, it would be so obvious for it to win. Um, and I think they'd already gotten the reward once. Um, so for me, I, I'm going Destiny 2 on this one. Uh, oh, I think really? that Why? Destiny 2, I think out of <laughs> all of these so games... Funny has has the the biggest and most not the biggest but the strongest community out of all of these games the a community that no, through thick and thin through through the first game and everything that's happened through the second game has continued to stick around provide their feedback and Bungie just continues to absorb that feedback and put it into the game whether that's changing the way that things are balanced whether that's adding new content you know whether it's just through the through the various different story content that they add into the game new weapons quests the whole nine yards destiny 2 for me is the one that i think deserves this yeah I, I'm, I'm going fortnite i i again kabo said it, it's an easy bet but i also look at what it's done this year whether it was uh you know concerts in game uh movie screenings the whole marvel arc that it, it just concluded yeah. mm -hmm. it was huge and i think in terms of like ongoing support if that's a game that regardless of whether or not they're speaking to their community directly they're still giving that reason to jump back in mm -hmm. uh season after season yeah i mean sean, sean murray's goofy smile lives rent free in my mind <laughs> <laughs> he the the love and care that he has for that game is one of the things that's made me come back to it um destiny 2 i've had a really hard time coming back to it i haven't stuck with it i it's been a love hate relationship um but yeah i mean the, the, there's a lot of big heavy hitters in this category mm. yeah i i want to say like i want to say i want to say call of duty warzone just because i play it a lot <laughs> and, but in terms of what you think of it evolving the player's experience other than like you know getting rid of modes every weekend and putting new ones, it, it doesn't really do that for me. Um, whereas yeah. Fortnite, like that whole, like you mentioned, Steve, a partnership with Marvel, movie screenings, the concerts, all of that, it continues to evolve the player experience outside of gaming. So it's going to take that category for me. Games uh, for an Impact. This is a game that is thought-provoking with a pro-social meaning or message. Uh, the games are If Found, Kentucky Route Zero TV Edition, Spirit Far, Tell Me Why, and Through the Darkest of Times. It's going to be Spirit Fair for me. I played Tell Me Why. I liked it. It didn't capture me as much as I would have liked it to. Uh, it felt a lot. Oh, I can't even remember the name of the game that it reminded me of a lot, but it just didn't quite capture me the way Spirit Fair did. Uh, I'm really just throwing like an uneducated guess out there as I haven't been able to play all these games and just going to say, uh, tell me why on this one. Yeah, I'm going to tell me why as well. I, I really wish I played more of these games on the list. Tell me why I've, I've played all the way through. And I think what, what it does for advocacy towards uh, trans individuals, it was respected. And I, I think that they did a lot of great stuff with that game. So that's, uh, that's my pick. Mm. I'm going to go with Tell Me Why as well, just because, um, yes, they've done a lot for trans advocacy, um, as well as I've played the game. Um, <laughs> and I enjoyed it, so yeah. there's my vote. Boom. Now, this one is Best Performance. Um, the award goes to an individual or voice actor um, that is that captured uh, the character the best. So you have Ashley Johnson in The Last of Us, Laura Bailey in The Last of Us, Daisuke uh, Tuzuji as Jin in Ghost of Tsushima, Logan Cunningham as Hades, and Naji Jeter as Miles Morales. This is, and you know, we briefly touched on this last week, but I'm going to mm -hmm. go with Laura Bailey as Abby. I, I think Abby was just such a hard character to come into the story with. And she gave uh, Laura Bailey her performance as Abby was just so in depth. It, there was all these ups and downs that she had to kind of express through. And I, I feel like that's the 
better performance within that game. I think for every reason you just listed, it should be Ashley Johnson. Um, but honestly, like even even part of me would love to see like an upset win for someone like Daisuke Suji because I think his performance in Ghost of Tsushima is very subtle, uh, mm -hmm. and I and I love that about it. Uh, Naji Jeter as well does a great job in Miles Morales. He is fantastic in that game. I don't know if he's of the caliber of the other three, um, but. It, this is Ashley Johnson's uh, award to win. Honestly, I, I would I wouldn't necessarily be upset if Laura Bailey won, but I think between her and Laura Bailey, Ashley Johnson, the amount of pain that her character goes through, the the emotion that she goes through, the roller coaster that her character goes through goes through through the Last of Us Part Two, um, it's it's a much more strong performance um, that that requires a lot more out of her as an actress uh, than I think what Abby's character did in uh, the last of part two i mean this list is stacked any one of these people could win and i'd be pretty happy uh i, th I think they're all talented but i gotta go mm -hmm. laura bailey um again that that uh, she stepped into a character that no one even knew and made us do like a, a 180 for her uh that that's not easy that's definitely not easy to do uh we've already known ellie she she's a character we we all have in the back of our minds but abby came in and have an uphill battle the entire time and it paid off so well. I still haven't played Last of Us 2, um, I know, but uh, I'm gonna go with Laura Bailey. Uh, I think you guys sold me on it. I, I will say though, uh, Daisuke Tsuji, uh, the, the subtlety in his, in his facial expression and how he was able to like mm -hmm. convey uh, conserved emotion was really good. Yeah. Mm. All right, best audio design. This recognizes the best in-game audio and sound design. You have Doom Eternal, Half-Life Alex, Ghost of Tsushima, Resident Evil 3, and The Last of Us Part 2. I'm going to actually go with Resident Evil 3 on this one, um, just because the audio in that game is insane. I, You know why it's The Last of Us Part 2? Workbench. That's all I need to say. Ooh. All I need to say. It's The Last of Us Part 2. <laughs> I th I'm gonna go Ghost of Tsushima because I it's the first game that I found an Im that I was impacted by silence. Um, it games mm. are so because I wanted to say Doom Eternal because I'm just I love the Doom uh, soundtracks they just get me every time. But Sucker Punch did such an amazing job of making you take a moment and listening to the wind and listening to nature and just creating these very silent, peaceful moments where mm -hmm. your your home country is on fire. It is burning. It is being invaded. But you can still find these moments of respite and silence, and that's why it takes mm. it for me. You're yeah, I'm going Ghost of Tsushima as well. Uh, I think, jumping off what you said, I, I think it does nail all those points, but also it makes a really great use for that DualShock 4 speaker that a lot mm -hmm. of games didn't and just chose to ignore the entire generation, and it made for a really immersive experience when you start hearing the wind come through, and it, it just sounded great. Now moving on to best score in music. Uh, this is outstanding music inclusive of score, original song, and or licensed soundtrack. You have Doom Eternal, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Hades, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, and The Last of Us Part Two. I cried in The Last of Us Part Two, and a lot of that was because of the music. Um, so I'm going to go with The Last of Us Part Two. Final Fantasy VII for me. Uh, it's someone uh, who I'm going... didn't... Yeah, sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Uh, no, no, no. Continue. Well, I was just going to say, uh, as someone who, again, didn't care about Final Fantasy, I walked away from that game caring about the soundtrack. Like There were moments in that, that the soundtrack gave me chills going through that game. So that's yeah, the one. Um, I, I'm picking The Last of Us Part Two, but the, the winner should be Ghost of Tsushima. I don't know why it's not even nominated. Yeah. Mm. I... It, it's funny you say that because Stealth Gamer in chat says Miles Morales should have been nominated for the soundtrack. Miles, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It should have been nominated yeah. as well. Absolutely. I don't think it deserves to win per se, but it should have been nominated. Yeah. I I'm gonna go oh, man, I'm gonna have to go with The Last of Us Part Two. Um I, I really liked the Doom Eternal soundtrack, but I get it's not for anyone. It's not for everyone, it's not groundbreaking. Um but yeah, Miles Morales or Ghost of Tsushima should have also been on this list. All right, best art direction. Uh, for Outstanding Creative and or Technical Achievement in Artistic Design and Animation, Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Orient the Will of the Wisp, and The Last of Us Part Two. Ghost of Tsushima. Ghost, that is yeah. art direction, the game. 
Uh, so it's Ghost of Tsushima. It's a lock. Yeah, the fact that they said, "Hey, no GPS, follow the wind to your to your yeah. that that right there is like when I when I told my girlfriend, I was like, "You literally just follow the wind to figure out where you need to go." And they do such a good job of deconstructing all of what we think makes a game and yeah. providing visual cues and, and just incorporating the art into making it a whole experience. Yeah, I totally agree. I think the fact that you can go from like one biome to the next and not even notice their transition, you look back and you're like, okay, when did it become snowy in this in this environment? That's right. Mm -hmm. The colors, oh my god, the colors. Oh, exactly. Man. That game's awesome. Okay. Even in black and white, that game is amazing. It's amazing. Beautiful. Yes. Um, okay, so goes to Tsushima across the board. For best narrative, this is outstanding storytelling and narrative development in a game. 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim um or agus whim final fantasy 7 remake ghost of tsushima hades and the last of us part two Whew, okay i'm gonna go with the last of us part two this is a story okay. that was groundbreaking for the franchise was not the simple and easiest way to go and they decided to take that route and it was done in a way that was able to captivate you regardless of your thoughts or love for characters in the previous game. Sure. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying going to remember like... that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you not play the game. So I'm like, yeah. how can I say these things? I'm going Last of Us Part Two as well. There are things that I obviously want to say, but I will because, uh, won't because Malik's here and also uh, audience members who may not have played the game. Play that game because it's got an outstanding story. I think it's yes. best in class. Best in class. Uh, yes. Naughty Dog once again knocked it out of the park. I just, I love Ghost of Tsushima too much to not pick it here. Uh, I think what will win is probably The Last of Us Part Two, But man, Ghost of Tsushima's story, the narrative, it's something that I really connected with uh, and something that really, really had me. Um, and that's just coming from somebody who, like, leading up to the release of Ghost of Tsushima, I was like, eh, I, yeah. I mean, I'll, try, I'll try it. I'll try it. And then, like, 15 or so hours in, I'm like, this is incredible. <laughs> like this might be one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, so like I just I'm picking Ghost of Tsushima, but I I'm, it's probably going to be Last of Us Two that wins this. Yeah, I got I got to go Ghost of Tsushima, and that's because I it made me care about side characters and their families. Mm. That yeah. that was what really stuck with me. The fact that you mm. knew that their families were in danger and that you could ignore them, but you would see the facial expression of Jin if you did, it, like if you turned your back to them. So, all right. Best game direction. Um, so this is for the outstanding creative vision and innovation in game direction and design. You have Final Fantasy VII Remake, Ghost of Tsushima, Hades, Half-Life Alex, and The Last of Us Part II. I'm actually going to throw it differently this time around. I'm going to say Final Fantasy VII Remake just because mm -hmm. it's innovating that title and reimagining how people could look at final fantasy i know some of the um mechanics used were used in other final fantasies but it really was perfected here with this title um yeah this is this is where pretty much i'm going to be only picking two games <laughs> for, <laughs> for like the last five uh categories because i'm going the last of us two here actually and it's mainly because of how bold and and how ballsy it is in terms of like from game direction like neil Druckmann really took some risks with yeah. this one and whether or not they paid off because there's certainly a lot of people that don't like the game but the fact that he was willing to be like i don't care these are my characters this is my world i get to choose and i get to dictate the vision of where this goes uh, and, and to take as big of a risk as he did, I think is something that I need to like commend. And so that's the one I'm going to go with. It's I'm last of us as well. Uh, I think it just from a, a game direction point of view, like you look at the cinematography in that game, that game oozed with style. Like Neil Druckmann yeah. knew what he was going to do and, and it, it, he excelled in it really. Um, yeah. yeah. There's not much yeah. else to say. I, I think he's, st it stands out. I the only reason I am choosing Ghost of Tsushima, not just because I haven't played The Last of Us, is because of Legends. The fact that that came out of nowhere and they mm -hmm. were basically able to implement an MMO light into a story based game it is incredible. Like, yeah, the game on its own is really, is really, really good. But then you take into account that Legends 
takes into account things that happened in the story and makes them a part of like this folklore and then to include actual folklore I, it just blew me away the fact that they were able to create a duality in a game like that it it just takes my vote yeah uh, all right. the big boy game of the year this is recognizing a game that delivers the absolute best experience across all creative and technical fields. You have Doom Eternal from ID Software, uh, Bethesda, Final Fantasy VII Remake from Square Enix, uh, Ghost of Tsushima from Sucker Punch and Sony Interactive Entertainment, Hades from Supergiant Games, Animal Crossing New Horizons from Nintendo, and The Last of Us Part II uh, from Naughty Dog and Sony Interactive Entertainment. This is... Like, I think last week I might have said The Last of Us Part 2 for me. But when I reread the definition of this category, it delivers the best overall experiences across um, the creative and technical fields. I would have to now say Ghost of Tsushima. Um, yes. I know. Like, we I did it, Caboose. We did it. Welcome, Camille. <laughs> you guys got me. You guys got me. Um, it's just... Like, like you mentioned, Steve, earlier, like you have to, and you have to follow the wind. There's no GPS. You just have to kind of go with the flow of things. I feel like that is something that is super risky because it's taking away what we think of a game um, and really putting itself out there. It's vulnerable to how um, gamers will take in this game, especially for Sucker Punch to do this. Like what a studio that small to take that risk and to have a really great experience where all these little things that are happening in the world, you're invested and interested in. Um, so mm -hmm. it's yeah. going to be Ghost of Tsushima for me. Yeah, it's it's Ghost of Tsushima for me as well. And sorry, sorry to cut you off, Malik. No, you're um, good. But, but uh, yeah, it's Ghost of Tsushima for me as well. And, and mainly as well because of just the creativity and the originality of the game. You look at the list of nominees, and this is not to knock any of the other nominees, but Doom Eternal, sequel, Final Fantasy VII Remake, remake of a pre-existing game hades original um and an indie game so like big ups for that animal crossing new horizons sequel to a pre-existing ip and the last was part two sequel to a pre-existing uh franchise now ghost of tsushima brand new ip from a studio that is doing something completely different from what they've done previously and they knock it out of the park they don't just make a good game they absolutely nail it and then in october of this year they're like hey you want to play this online with your friends and have all the greatness that you experienced in the single player, but with up to four people, let's do that for you. And, and it just, it completes what is already an incredible, pretty much perfect experience for me. That being said, and I said this last week, I would love to see the last of us win just to watch everybody cry about it. That's, <laughs> that's what I am hoping to happen just so that I can laugh at people's tears as they once again are proven wrong about how much they think The Last of Us 2 was a failure. Fair enough. I, I mean, I've said it time and time again, is Ghost of Tsushima, game of the year and probably game of the decade. I can't think of a game that has impacted me as much as Ghost of Tsushima. I, I, I try to look back on that game and think about things that I didn't like. And I genuinely cannot find a single one. The The climbing was a little bit wonky, yeah. But the fact that how you equip yourself with your armor is you go and you do these detailed storylines helping people in his country. And then you carry the weight of that with you as you're progressing. And this story of a man who is supposed to be stalwart. He's supposed to hold on to his honor. He's supposed to be unwavering in, in how yep. he saves his people. And, and truly pushing, you know just being able to to see a culture right that is long gone and, and be able to really connect with it in, in a genuine way is, is something that i have to commend sucker punch for especially being the studio that they are and then like you said the multiplayer that came out with it just everything about this game just is the topping the icing on the cake mm -hmm. I, i'm predicting an upset here i'm thinking hades is going to take it really oh. no shot yeah. No I, shot. No. If, if hear, Hades, hear me, out here. hear me out here. Okay. Okay. Last of Us Part Two was such a divisive game, and you got to remember who's actually voting on these things. Last of Us Part Two was super divisive in terms of critics. Uh, Ghost of Tsushima, I, I think, has a, an incredible community, but just didn't have that splash in terms of like the critical eye. Hades is that one game that people just keep talking about, and I think at, when it comes to it, this 
vote's going to be split between Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima, but I think Hades is going to be that one that pushes through. You also have to look at last year's uh, winner, which was Sekiro, a game no one thought had a chance of winning. So yeah, that's true. Game Awards is a place where you know the unsuspecting things can happen. Yeah, and I think it's going to happen this year again. Yeah, you certainly got to expect the unexpected, but I think if we're talking in terms of why Sekiro won last year, it was like the highest rated game in terms of like critic That's review true. last yeah. year. That, that was probably like by a definition, the one that deserved to win. And so I think, again, that's probably why The Last of Us Part Two will win, in my opinion. Um, but if, like, if I'm going to pick one, even though I might be missing points on it, I have to pick Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, I think, and this may be a, a hot take or a controversial point, I think Hades is a great game. I don't think it deserves Game of the Year. And I say this because it came out in early access of December in 2018. And yes, the, the full release of the game was this year. But it, it's had time to kind of test what works and what doesn't and, and kind of figure out its own style and identity. Whereas Ghost of Tsushima came out of nowhere. We knew Last of Us 2 was coming. It, 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 we had a build up for it. There's already that emotional connection. For a game like Ghost of Tsushima, to come and make a connection and to just be so impactful in the way that it delivers its art style and, a, and an entire culture, I, I think that's something uncontested that not many games, period, can do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it, it's definitely going to be an interesting uh, time to see all the nominations play out. Uh, obviously, Game of Awards will air on December 10th, and I know all... Uh, four of us will be watching chat i'm hoping you're gonna watch too because next week we're gonna we're gonna come back on monday and talk about how it all went down um we're gonna find out who won the predict predictions here and who got yeah. the most points, as well as some of the surprises because you know that they're going to be revealing um first looks at games so we're gonna mm -hmm. get to look at all of those so be sure to join us next week as well for now make sure that you check out all of our content at squadstate.com as well as Stay up to date with us on our socials, uh, Twitter specifically, at uh, Squad State. And until then, we will see you next time. Bye, guys. See ya. See ya.